everybody, welcome. Thanks for joining me today. It's Carla here for week two of I Rule with the Ruler Work. And I'm really excited to show you. We're going to talk more about marking the quilt and getting ready to actually start quilting our quilt. So first of all, let me remind you about Spring Fling coming up and make sure you're pre-registering. Head over to the website at graceframe.com, find the events button, find Spring Fling, and then click on the registration button and pre-register. Then your name is in the drawing for the 16 inch Elite and the Hoop Frame, and they will announce the winner on April 6th at 11 a.m. And make sure you mark your calendars for that. So some of the highlights for the Spring Fling are Amanda is gonna show you how to make a bookshelf quilt. She's used automation. A lot of creativity has gone into that. You will have so much fun seeing what she is doing with the automation and how she created from scratch. This is her own way of making a bookshelf quilt, okay? Then Maddie has gone and she has made a world map um, using squares and blocks and she put it together because it's kind of her, uh, her bringing world peace to everybody out there. And so she pieced the world together come and see what she's doing and she'll explain why she did this because she likes to travel and and a little bit more as to what she was thinking and she we're going to invite you to make what she is doing as well so we'll have all the patterns and everything um, ready for you so that you can download them and join us um, for learning how to make these wonderful things then Carla here is going to show you another way to use extreme paper piecing. I'm really excited about this because I've wanted to do this for a while and this kind of pushed me thinking outside the box on an illusion quilt. And it's gonna have a 3D look and I'm using various colors and really excited to show you how easy it is and how you can create your own look without going to a lot of hard work just a few necessary steps and using your frame, your machine, and it's going to do all the quilting and piecing for you. You're just doing the cutting and the ironing of the seams um, using the ironing board. So really slick, really easy, and I, I'm really excited about this. So join us, and then we'll show you where to find the schedule and the classes. So make sure you're looking for that um, on the website under the fall, uh, spring fling, sorry, and then um, you'll find the events and the schedule. Uh, not only us here at Grace Education, we're having so many wonderful quilters. Uh, Jennifer Davey, who's new, she's going to be um, showing her way of quilting and how you can use your quilting frame and machine. She's got wonderful ideas. She's going to be joining us. Lizzie Allen, we have Jackson, we have Ashley Journey, and so many many more. We have Becky, we have Leslie. So join us for our Spring Fling. Okay, enough said about Spring Fling. We're here to learn ruler work and so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to jump in and talk about how I am using my rulers and how I marked my border. Um, I thought this was really fun and it turned out even better than I anticipated it would. So how I found out my center. Okay, I just folded um, my quilt in half and I found my center and it should line up <laughs> with your point right here on the block. So make sure that you fold it and then I folded it one more time because I wanted um, my border to be even and sometimes I'm not very good at math and I want to eliminate as much math as possible. So I folded it in half and then I folded it in half one more time to get this line. So the folding in half is this line here, then you'll fold it in half one more time and you'll get probably get a line, um, a crease right around this area right here, okay? Then I measured the distance between those two folds, okay? And it was five inches and it worked out really nice because this is a three inch border it turned out to be, I cut it three and a half, so it's a three inch border, okay? And then I took my square ruler and I started making my markings. So I made my first marking right here, 
top to bottom, and I just use my pencil again. I'm using the pencil, you don't have to, but I like the pencil because I can erase the lines, okay? And I want to make it dark enough so that I can see it. With, with ruler work, you really need good lighting. So if you do not have our, our luminous light fixture over your frame, please think about getting it because it will really help with the glare um, from the light up above and it really does help you see and illuminate the shadows and things like that that can mess with our mind and our eyes. So make sure that you have really good lighting. All right, so I marked that. Then I went every five inches and I used my ruler, okay? So I marked every five inches going across. All right, so I would mark it right here. I wanted to turn it this way. So I was going across this way. So I marked it five inches. I went and marked here and here on the bottom and then I just went across that way. So every five inches and I ended up right here. Okay, if I went another five, it wasn't going to allow me to have a full five inches, so it didn't work out. So, what I did is I started from the center and worked my way up this way, and then I sectioned those off. I did the five inches, then I did two and a half inches. So, I did a line in between that was two and a half. So, I started working my way this way, and I just drew the line in between. Now I have it done in sections for my marking. So I wanted to start with my corner block first, okay? So I wanted to really use this slice ruler um, for uh, the design. So let me show you how cool this is. Okay, I'm moving the machine over here, but notice right here you have this um, point. You have a center line and you have these two points that come and intersect, okay? Look at how well those fit right here on my quilt. So these two lines really matched up with the point that it ended on both sides. So I just use this angle, okay, using these lines right here on the edge to align it, and I just used my pencil and I did my line down on each side, okay? Then I use these lines here to you make a quarter of an inch line all the way out. And I did it twice, okay? Just make sure that you're lining up. I did that twice and I did the same thing on this side. So I did the quarter inch and I make sure you do the right angle and then the quarter inch again, okay? Then with that being done, I don't know what else I'm gonna do in here, but it worked out. And I also did a center line using this ruler here I made a center line from point to point so that I could align this center line on there as well, make my points nice and straight. So let's go over here, okay, and mark this one, okay? I've kind of already done it, but notice on this one here, it's up, it's not on exactly straight. So I'm just going to do one line and make sure that it's straight, but I'm going to also mark my line from point to center. So let me show you how to do that. So I'm just going to take my ruler and line it up, and I'm just going to do a mark from this point right here to this point right here so that they match up. And I'm going to make them dark enough so I can see and make sure that everything's nice and straight. Okay, so there's my line. And now I'm going to make sure that this edge at least and this point are my straight ones and a line right there, okay? All right, and I'm going to come down and mark. And then mark this side. Okay, and I want you to notice right here that that line's not very straight. So let me go and straighten that out because this, we need it nice and straight. And I must have just come in just a little bit, but notice now it looks good, okay? So this is your chance to fix things and make sure it's working. All right, so now I've done that, I'm going to use this side, make sure that I'm marking it. See how cool? I'm going to start, stop right there at that line. I'm going to do it one more time. And then I'm going to mark across my quilt. Now, as you get more familiar with 
how things work. You probably won't need to mark quite as much, but we're just beginning and we're just getting used to it. So I always start out marking my quilt, but by the end, I'm not even using my pencil and I'm just marking. Okay, so now I have those lines done. So now I'm going to use my ruler again, okay? And I'm just going to make this point to this point and I'm going to do my zigzag all the way across. All right, now I can angle it. See how cool this is? And I want to just make sure that I'm coming down to this point here. And that one, see how it's not matching up? Yeah. Okay, and I'll do one more time. All right, so I want to make sure that those lines are matching up. And I probably didn't get them quite as straight as I needed to. So let's make sure that I come back and make sure that these two meet up. Because I want my points to meet up. And notice that this one's up a little higher. Yeah. There we go. That's a little better. I might have to work on that one just a little bit. Work your way across, make sure that it looks cohesive and nice and straight. And it's probably because my line is not as straight as I need it to be. So just keep working with that. And we'll have some adjustments that we need to make. And every line will not, looks like it's not the same. So what we'll do is now that we have our angles, we'll just do this. And we'll go from this point to this point and we'll use this ruler. I want to make sure that it's nice and straight. And then let's go from this point to this point. And then I want to go a quarter of an inch, make sure that it's lined up. It's much better. And then, and then this point to this point. I don't think those markings on that ruler, sorry, blank, are straight. There we go. All right, so that worked out much better than the other one, but you're just gonna keep going across the quilt, okay? So once you get to the middle, then you have it. So then it's like, do I do, wanna do one more line coming down, or do I wanna fill this in with a design um, as I'm going up and down? But let's talk about marking some of these areas in here, okay? And then quilting it. So I like using these rulers because they give you a nice, secure, measurement. So I'm going to move down and I can use these rulers as my guide. And notice I'm lining it up on the seam here. Let me lift this up and pull it down just a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I like to use these bigger rulers as well. Use what you have available. So as I'm marking, because I want to make this into a square, so I want to line this up and I'm going to use this line here of my four inch and this line here, and I'm just gonna come down and make sure that I'm marking lightly. And I wanna do the same thing here. I'm gonna use my four inch and this line here. Right, I have to turn it this way. And I have to pull this up, okay, so I can pull it back <laughs> so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so notice my four inch now is on this side, okay. So I'm using my four inch mark right here. So it's supposed to meet right down here. And I'm lining it up with this point right here. Notice now I have a square here, a square here with two half triangles and half triangles. And now I can start just making some really neat designs. So I could use this ruler here and come in a quarter of an inch if I wanted to, or even a half of an inch. So you decide how you want to do it and go around and fill this one in and then do the same thing with these triangles. 
is experiment and have fun with ruler work. Now you could divide this up into four triangles and fill them in, or even eight triangles, and you could have a little um, a spinning wheel along here, a little pinwheel, like this. Right here, you could make it a little pinwheel, or you could just make it as simple as possible and just do your stitch in the ditch, then come in and just make just a light one and then just fill that in. Very simple, very basic. You could come in a half of an inch. You can do whatever you feel like you want to. So let me show you right here. So there's lots of ways that you can quilt this. Um, remember, I just did it down here and down here. So we made more squares. And you want to make sure your points line up. Okay, so let's get in and let's start quilting. So now that's a little square. And like I was saying, you could come in a quarter of an inch or half an inch. What's nice about these is you have the markings, so use them to your advantage, okay? Because I don't want to go all the way down and have a little mark all the way across. See what happens if I do that? We want to stop. So if I don't want my markings, I'm going to use this as my points. So I'm going to use these two points in between and make sure that it's a quarter of an inch, okay? So that we have going a quarter of an inch all the way around. All right, if I don't do it that way, I'm going to have a line going across this way and this way. So, and this way, and I'm going to have extra little lines where I don't want them. I just want it free and clear. So I want it to look like this. So use the markings on your ruler to have it work. My ruler got, was getting in the way. And then you could fill this in with the little circles, little pebbles, and play with it that way. Okay, so now I'm just gonna come back in and show you how to use and stabilize the stitch, and let's go and start doing some actual quilting, okay? So let's bring my needle up, okay? I'm just gonna show you how to use it with the ruler, and I'm just gonna use this ruler right here, okay? And my open toe foot, okay? Notice how I've set my ruler, how I can hold it down, and I'm not gonna fill in this line because I don't want to do that. I don't know what I'm going to do in here, but it's going to be something fun. Okay, so let's bring up our threads. All right. Now I've brought up my thread. I'm going to use my wonderful True Cut ruler and just make sure it's angled correctly all the way down. All right, and I want to make sure that I hit this point right here. All right. So as I'm quilting, notice I just want to stay right on that line. Hold it. And I want to come right down to that point there. Okay, now I want to move it slightly over and go up and do this line here, okay? So I'm going to bring my thread up. I'm just going to move it over. And I, actually, I want to stabilize my stitch. I, I didn't do that, and I need to remember. Okay, so I want to just stabilize my stitch so it doesn't come undone, all right? And when I cut my threads, I want to make sure that it's okay. So I just want to be really careful, just do a couple of stitches. Okay, that's it. And I'm going to pull on my threads. All right, bring my needle up, and I'm just going to move it over, okay? I'm going to move it over. And then I'll cut my threads later on. Okay, I don't want to sew up here because I don't want a line in there. I just want it to be one continuous line. And I'm going to angle it so that I make sure that my ruler is on my other line. That's one of the benefits of marking is that you have a nice straight line where you know where to hold your ruler. Okay, so now I want to put my needle in the down position. Okay, and notice that it's not, it's not right on. So I'm going to readjust and put the needle down again, okay. So now I'm just going to move my way up. I want to do my 
back and forth stitch. So I'm going to turn my machine on, okay? I want to come back just a little bit to secure it. And then I'm just going to move up that line there. Okay. And then I'm going to stop. Secure it. Okay. There we go. And then you're just going to do that back and forth, back and forth. But see how cool that is? So now let's do the last one. Now I don't have a line to show me where to hold my position, my ruler. I'm just going to kind of guess. And this is where you'll get really good. You're going to learn to eyeball how far away your ruler is from that line so you can stay on it. But with the needle, with the foot being an open toe, you can see where the needle is so that you can make some adjustments if you need to, pulling it out or in. So that's why I like to use my hand like this. And as I'm moving along, sometimes I'll, I'll have the ruler move along with it and keep it right on that line. And I'll make my adjustments back and forth as I'm quilting. And you will get so good at ruler work. Oh my gosh, it's so much fun. So let's turn it on. Okay, I'm gonna go back and forth. And notice that, yeah, I just wanna keep it on. See, I'm bringing this side in just a little bit. And I'm gonna stop it right here, go back just a little back and forth. Okay, all right. So now I'm done with that line. Now I can cut my threads and then move on to the next, okay? So let's bring my needle up, pull my threads. I'm gonna make a tail on the bottom and the top, bring it back, and then do my single stitch, and pull that thread up, and then start cutting. Okay, and if you see little problems, you can adjust it. Like, you know, my going back and forth isn't that great, but that's what I'm gonna work on. I'm gonna work on making it so it looks seamless all the way across. And I, I, I probably, if I had this all the way marked, I probably wouldn't even stop. I'd go up and down, back and forth, and it'd be one continuous line. So mark your quilt first, and then head across it, and it'll look more seamless and more cohesive, okay? So that's what we're going to practice this week. Just practice your angles, practice your ruler work, make sure you're getting those angles, and then make sure, then try, try it without marking. Now, so we could try this one without marking. Now, I'm not gonna do that right yet, but, but you can try it and see how good you become with ruler work, because you really are in charge. You're telling it what to do. It's not gonna tell you what to do. Um, just make sure that you have your true grips. Make sure that you know that you can make adjustments. And once you learn to understand how your machine works and you get all those settings correct, wow. You're going to be gold. You're going to whip through these as quick as possible. Now, ruler work can seem a little bit more tedious, and it is, but it's a lot more fun because look how accurate my stitching looks compared to if I was just trying to free motion that. It's much better, okay? And yeah, I can see a few little wobbles, but man, we're not gonna nitpick these, okay? These are our beautiful quilts that we are learning on. So enjoy the process, practice that this week, and then next week we're gonna jump in and I'm really gonna oh, go, just have so much fun with more ways to use the ruler and enhance your quilt with the rulers. And then the last week we're gonna learn how to do filler designs in them. Filler designs are, will just add that extra little touch that you're just like, wow, how did they do that? So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. And so join me next time. This was a short little segment, but it's good. And just practice, 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 okay? I'll see you next week, bye-bye.